Welcome to the quarterly lecture series of the Nigeria and Diaspora Commission 2024. We're going to start with the national anthem. <laughs> Thank you. You can all be seated. Nikon presents the Diaspora Virtual Lecture Series on the topic New Passport Policy Processes for Nigerians in the Diaspora. Today, Tuesday, February 6, 2024, is a webinar meeting. Before we go about this, recognize. The Chairman, Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerians in the Alabama uh, Commission is here, Honorable Dr. Abike Rewa Otome. We also have the Secretary to the Commission, Engineer Dr. Sule Yamun Bas. For a point of time, I recognize all management staff here present and other subsidiaries here. Then we have some special guests with us today. We have our own dear Professor Emeritus, Augustine, we say Professor Emeritus, Doctor Augustine, Thank you very much. All the way from Georgia, Atlanta. We also have our own very good friend, uh, Professor Mani. Say and near on the source here with us. Professor, you are welcome. I'm free for yes. So we now have um, we await the arrival of the CG immigration, which joining us shortly, and our key speaker, keynote speaker today is the honorable minister of the interior, honorable doctor. That is the sense of our protocols. We now welcome the Chairman Chief Executive Officer, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Honorable Dr. Abike Dabri Rewa, OON, who do us welcome remarks. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister, you did hear us already. Another round of applause. But I can't even speak to you today. Honorable Minister, I don't know who you are today. The most welcome and keynote speaker. This um, webinar, the first, the first in 2024, has generated so much attention that we're even worried that our whole system will not crash. Because we have thousands that have been registered. Because this is a very important topic to them, Honorable um, Minister of Interior, as well as the fact that the Minister of Interior has actually, within a short time, Let me also welcome our special guest in the room with us. By the way, the coincidence that they are here with us, but we have our father, Professor Sofwood, Professor Emeritus. Oh, right. 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 You know, like you are looking like a newcomer. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Professor Miley, fresh from the US, who also is looking like 
Sweet 16. <laughs> Thank you very much for being physically here with us. The four Dr. Bathory and all our brothers and sisters in the diaspora joining this webinar. I welcome you to the very first Diaspora Virtual Lecture Series 2024 under the topic New Passport Policy Processes for Nigerians in the Diaspora today. And I urge you all to please send your questions to our email, our Facebook giving at bin.gov.ng. We have some of our leaders in the diaspora that will make some interventions. So it's your comments are most welcome. They'll be answered by the because one of the biggest issues is that we know of passports. Every time we are bombarded with issue of passports and all that. And then the minister came on board and said the process will be fully digital and that there will be a um, contactless policy. So this is a platform to have the minister and the controller general explain what this process means. As I yesterday, we already got several questions via our email. So we want to make it easier for you and the bridge between the government and the diaspora to bring this matter to you wherever you are. And then to also see how the minister's aim and objective of making everything seamless will be achieved. So I think that's the essence of being here. So we hope we're done in less than two hours. And as we prepare for that, I want to urge all of you in the diaspora to always ensure that you um, uh, be careful in engaging with just anybody in the diaspora. Just a few days ago, we still had issues of some people that came with the, the petition of being duped of about I'm a 20 million naira that they deposited to somebody. Please try to just confirm with the diaspora permission so that um, we, we get that clarification for you and we don't want you to be victims. Diaspora issues are now on the front burner and we thank you for all you've been doing in the diaspora to ensure that you join us in building this great country of ours. So this is one of our programs, the virtual lecture series. Of course, we have the Diaspora Day. We're going to be five years this year. We look forward to having all of you participate. The Diaspora Investment Summit in November is getting bigger and better. And we're proud that Nigerians are invested in their country. And we keep celebrating all of you. I mean, the richest immigrant in the world is a Nigerian, at least in America, is a Nigerian. And our own Dr. Gulesi has joined the Billionaire Club. So we keep celebrating every one of you and keep telling the best stories about ourselves. So we count on you, the diaspora, to work with Nigerians at home to make this country truly a great one. So on that note, um, I'll be handing over to the Honorable Minister. But before then, we have a short documentary that I'm going to play. You're going to see the minister talk about um, what he wants to do with passport issuance. So the video first, and then we will invite the Honorable Minister, our brother, Dr. Tunji Ojo, to now speak to us. Thank you very much. The video is actually uh, excerpt from the Honorable Minister's speech when he came to the conference in the US. So we'd like to have the video because he spoke very well on the issue of the policy and process. So that will be the Ready? Okay, while we wait for the video, it's my signal honor to invite the Honorable Minister of the Interior, who is our keynote speaker today, Honorable Dr. Baruch Dr. 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 to give her to speak on new passport policy and processes for Nigerians 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, permit me to recognize the... Hello? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Please permit me to um, recognize the executive chairman of NITCOM, my own big sister, my auntie, uh, Honorable Abike Dabirerewa, and um, the secretary of um, NITCOM. And permit me to um, start on all established protocols. But today is a very wonderful day uh, for Nigeria, and not just for Nigerians in diaspora, but for Nigeria as a nation. Because this is a journey that we started um, a couple of months ago. And I have to, before I move on, I have to especially appreciate the <clears throat> chairman of NITCOM, who has, re she has really been available in terms of um, troubleshooting and making sure that all uh, loose ends are tied up so that we can give Nigerians in diaspora a very good service. We stand here today at a pivotal moment. For too long, acquiring Nigerian passport has been an arduous process, fraught with long queues, bureaucratic hurdles, unnecessary delays, and sometimes unnecessary exhaustion of people. This not only caused frustration and inconvenience for Nigerians at home, but also painted an unflattering picture of our nation on the global stage. However, a new dawn is upon us since assuming office under the leadership of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, the Ministry of Interior has embarked on a comprehensive transformation journey with unwavering faith and an enabling environment fostered by the president. We have achieved significant milestones, some of which are clearing over 200,000 backlogs, passport backlogs within three weeks, alleviating a national crisis and restoring pride in our identity system, spearheading the deployment of e-gates at international airports, streamlining entry and exit process for Nigerians, as a matter of fact, as we speak, the e-gate in Abu Janam Jaziku International Airport has been installed, and we are awaiting delivery by next week for 16 e-gates that will be installed in Lagos. So by the grace of God, we are working on our March deadline for installation of e-gate command and control center across all our international airports, namely Abuja, Lagos, Ano, Port and of course, Enugu. This will enhance the capacity of our immigration officers to be able to do what we call pre-profiling of, of our people and also to give Nigerians a seamless and a sweet experience when coming back to Nigeria. As I've said too many times, that, the, that there's no need for a Nigerian coming back to his country to see immigration officers unless the person is someone of interest. So with the deployment so of e-gates e in all our international airports, we can be sure of a seamless experience and a sweet experience befitting of the giant of Africa, that's Nigeria. Nigeria. We've also been able to harmonize identity data to eliminate duplication and identity theft, thereby enhancing security. What this means now, is that from this new system of passport acquisition that we have been able to do, there is a robust handshake between NIMSI and of course the NIS. So what it means is basically Nigerians don't need to enter their details again when applying. All you need is your NIN number. Once you put your NIN number, there's a handshake that pulls your data from NIMSI's database and auto fills your form for you. This is to ensure that the identity details we have at the level of NIMSI is the same identity that we'll have at the level of NIS. This will help us to ensure a single point of contact and to, to prevent identity fraud and a scenario whereby people carry four or five passports with different names, different identities. These are things that we aim to stop, especially now leveraging, further leveraging 
on the already established biometric feature in our passport acquisition process. Also, we have also been able to automate the passport enrollment process, ensuring a smoother and faster experience for all. For instance, now uh, with what we started in Nigeria on January 8th, which is basically automating our passport process. Before we came on board, we realized that on archiving our document, we're spending average of 200 Naira on a single application. So by 3 million means over 600 million Naira. But with the new technology we've been able to deploy, it means that we're saving government of that money now. That's one. Then two, we all also have what we call audit trail and we have these documents in our database. So people upload their passport uh, picture, just like the same picture you upload when looking, when you want to apply for visa or any other document is the exact quality of what we ask for. So with this stage now, within five to maximum seven to 10 minutes, Nigerians can complete the whole process of applying for their passport while reducing um, human interface. The last few months have seen us consciously taking both steps toward the launch of our new passport policy processes for Nigerians both at home and in diaspora. This initiative driven by the unwavering belief that Nigerians deserve the best. And as I always say, treating Nigeria right, it's the right of every Nigerian. Either at home or in diaspora, Nigerians deserve to be treated with the with the with the with the best service. They deserve to be treated with the highest level of respect, and they deserve to be treated knowing fully well that we are only here in government because we have Nigerians. We cannot lead ourselves. If we are in a position of leadership, it means that we must be able to use that opportunity to be able to give what we call a super sweet experience to Nigerians. It's our aim that this initiative will decongest existing centers by establishing dedicated passport processing and collection centers in diaspora, fast track service operation, reduced processing delays in Europe through the enhanced e-passport with stricter adherence to application guidelines. We understand that there are some of our missions too up till now that we don't have a half passport scheme. We are working seriously to make sure that we create um, a uniform um, process, you know, across all um, our missions in the, in the diaspora. While we have continued to pull resources and manpower towards this actualization, a team from the ministry has been set up and deployed to UK to oversee the implementation of the E8 mandate. This signifies our commitment to standing strong and delivering tangible results. Furthermore, we are rolling out new, new enhanced e-passport facilities at Nigerian embassies in Europe, positioning Nigeria as a leader in technological innovation within the African continent. This enhanced e-passport which is continuation of what we have already. We're just trying to make sure that we extend to those missions where we don't have the e enhanced e-passport at the moment. We'll comply with all ICAO standards, ensuring international recognition and security. It also offers Nigerians in diaspora greater convenience. Apply, pay online at your fingertips, reduce processing times, enhance security, travel with peace of mind. This is important, especially with the contactless biometric that will be coming up. Because the whole idea is, as I always say, I really, really feel for Nigerians in diaspora having to travel with their families to missions just to acquire an international passport. I have always said, I don't think it's something that should continue. And this is 2024, not 1984. So technology must take its rightful place in whatever we do. So what we have decided, we were supposed to go live in on February eighth, but we had to, uh, which was to we're supposed to go live minus the contactless. But we analyzed and saw that the major concern of Nigerians in diaspora is obviously the contactless, which will finally eradicate movement from one place to another in the pop, in the process of passport acquisition. I give this example. Like for our people in Canada, if you are in Vancouver or you are in uh, Ontario or, um, or Manitoba, you do not need to come to Ottawa again. Well, once you 
want to renew your passport, you, all you need to do, you apply online, we, you capture your fingerprint and your biometric features using our contactless application that will be on the system. Then the system synchronizes and automatically has an, in, uh, an exchange with our database and confirm maybe that the biometric identity you have provided is actually yours since we already have it in our database. Once it's the same, then it, you finish the whole process online without coming to any office. And at the end of the day, we produce your passport with DHL, we create it to your house. So we are looking at starting this by the grace of God on the on 8th of March, the contactless biometric on the 8th of March, as we had promised earlier. But we are also being very careful. We do not want to rush every um, part of the diaspora at the same time. You know, we need to be sure because there might be teaching issues just like we started the upload of documents and et cetera from Nigeria. And of course, in the last one month, we had some issues, but I'm happy to tell you now that the system has stabilized to the point now that the rate of uh, what's it called, the query rate is just 3% at, at, the, at, at this level. And we have about 100,000 people in the last one month that have used the application. And I can tell you, we have only 3%, which is just less, about, about less than 3,000 people, you know, that were queried, 3,000 applications that were queried. So it means that we are not, um, we, are, we know there will be, there will be, issues. Of course, she's normal with any technology. But the bottom line is that we are determined and we are poised to make sure that we um, that we solve these issues to the betterment of Nigeria. So on the 8th of March, by the grace of God, we'll be starting with about a minimum of four of our um, of our um, missions. We're looking at starting in in Europe. We're we're starting with uh, Italy in Europe. We'll be starting with Canada in the Americas. We'll be starting with South Africa in Africa, and of course, Malaysia in, um, in Asia. So once we start with these four, we'll have like a month to be able to perfect all um, issues. And by the grace of God, by April 8th, we will now uh, extend it to all over, knowing fully well that if there are issues, small, small issues would have corrected those um, those issues. But the good thing that I'm happy to tell Nigerians is that by the grace of God, the days when somebody will leave Birmingham, leave Scotland or Wales to go to London just for the sake of passport is coming to an end. We cannot continue to inconvenience our people. We cannot continue to make Nigerians go through pain for what ordinarily should be their right, for what they should be able to get. Our passport is our pride. And we must make sure that the rights of Nigerians, the pride of we as Nigerians, which is our green passport, must not be what people will go through hell, waste money, waste energy, waste resources before being able to acquire. I want to say this together. It is my belief that we can rewrite the narrative. Let us make acquiring a Nigerian passport a source of pride, not frustration. Let us build a future where the Nigerian passport is a symbol of progress, unity, and global recognition. This is a new era for Nigeria and for Nigerians in diaspora. The future is bright, and the passport to a brighter future is now in your hands. This is the era of renewed hope under President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And in the Ministry of Interior, we have keyed fully into the Renew Hope agenda. And we have said that hope, realization of the hope, and bringing the hope to reality starts for, from now. It, we have started it, we will continue it, and we will make sure that Nigerians will no longer need to lose a day work. The Nigerians will no longer need to sweat. Nigerians will no longer need to go through pain before they acquire what should be their pride, which is the Nigerian passport. May God bless Nigerians in diaspora. May God bless NITCOM. May God bless Ministry of Interior. May God bless the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And may God bless Nigeria as a country. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Thank you, Honorable Minister.
for that keynote speech. I will get to the chairman of the Giants and Diaspora Commission has a response before we welcome the CG. Well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Honorable Minister. What about you? Thank you very much, Minister. I think um, uh, the minister was clear, and um, I think we should give another round of applause. And as I said, uh, there's been only three to four in the and I'm sure we'll see. One of the things that you touched on a few things which I'm sure Nigeria and diaspora will. Um, like I said, like I said, we're we receiving it, and the world is largely captured. You start to and then things like the development of the government, and the development of the city, the key thing is that part A, um, the diaspora aspect of it will take off. Right? So we thank you for that, Honorable Minister. We will read, I don't think I should read, we will allow the city to make the own remarks, and then we go to, for those of you waiting, We'll come to you in a moment. And that's kind of you guys are present. But let's welcome. Um, I'm talking about general. Well, let's just build. Our. 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 Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the listeners of afternoon, I want to tell you and my sister's gratitude to my sister's gratitude in the very room for availing me the opportunity. To be the guest speaker in today's episode of the Diaspora Lecture Series. I have always admired the zeal and passion with which Dr. Abike Dabiri Rewa discharges her duties to our fatherland in general and to our numerous diasporas in particular. Thank you so much, ma'am. You remain a shining example and a worthy role model. In leadership. Um, the topic in consideration today is new passport policy processes for Nigerians in diaspora. My outline for delivering the lectures are as follows What is the new passport policy all about? Why the new passport policy? 
when is the new policy coming live in diaspora? How have we been able to achieve success so far? The passport application process is step by step process. Um, outline number one the new passport policy. This outline will try to explain the differences between the current passport application process and the new or upcoming process. Currently, passport applicants go online to apply for passport services, book appointments for appearance in our passport processing centers after payment. They print out the documents, the applications, and payment receipts include their supporting documents, such as birth certificates or declaration of age, national identity number registration slip, the rental forms, and uh, proceeds to the passport and the proceed to the passport control offices for Nigerians at home and for our beloved diasporans to our embassies and commission or consular offices. At these centers, which are usually overcrowded, they sit before our passport enrollment officers who are usually overstretched, working in our overstretched centers for biodata and biometric enrollment after verification of documents. This process usually takes at least 20 minutes per applicant. The impact of this on applicants in places like London, Washington, New York, Atlanta, and many of our high volume application centers are better imagined. However, in the new process, applicants will be able to complete the entire process online by uploading the reader documents remotely. Outline two, why the new passport policy? The objectives are A, to ease the passport application process. B, make process modern, make the process modern, more effective and efficient to improve our service delivery to support the federal government policy of single ident identification depository with the National Identity Management Commission, NIMC, and E, the prevention of identity theft as it related to travel documents. Under the able leadership of our supervisory minister, Honorable Dr. Ulubi Tujujo, the Nigeria Immigration Service came up with a new policy as a response and a solution to the numerous calls from Nigerians who daily encounter stress and dissatisfaction with the existing passport application process. The new process will reduce human interface between applicants, middlemen, sometimes, Nigerian immigration personnel also, and thereby eliminating the inconvenience associated with this. This will also save both our personnel and applicants. The loss of man hour, which is attendant to the old regime, our facilities too will no more be overstretched. The Japa syndrome has impacted the nation in several ways, among which is the NI, which is that the NIS has experienced an unprecedented increase in passport applications. In 2021, the total number of passports issued was 1,033,506. In 2022, the total number of passports issued was 
729, indicating an increase of about 50%. Whereas in 2023, the total number of passports issued was 2,141,300. This is a 100% increase. The, these data are pointers to the need for this reform. The reform to reduce pressure on our uh, overstretched facilities, overstretched manpower, and our overstretched passport applicants who wait on endless queues in the cold and in the heat, holding documents in their hands, sometimes traveling with vulnerable members of their family, such as pregnant women, children, persons living with disability, the aged or the sick, traveling and being away from the comforts of their homes for days, wasting time, wasting man hour and other resources to just to have their expired passport renewed. A good example is the hypothetical family of six living in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, who need to travel to Ottawa, Ontario, in Canada to have their expired passports renewed. This involves several hours of air travels. Imagine the impacts, the financial impacts. And sometimes they are not able to complete this application in the process. In the day. They will have to cough out money to pay for themselves and other inconveniences and such inconveniences. Same goes for diasporas in the west coast of the United States of America who need to travel hours to any of the three passport processing centers in the United States for the renewal, just a renewal of their passports, or of their expired passport. The Nigeria Immigration Service is leveraging on technology by the new passport policy and issuance processes to make passport services easier, more accessible, and seamless to the teeming population of our dear citizens in diaspora. Outline number three, when are we coming live in the diaspora? Just like my honorable minister had said, by the grace of God on the 8th, March 8th, 2024, by which time we hope to have been fully ready for the complete automation of the passport application process in which we would, during in the time we will have been ready for the contactless biometric deployment process for all passport applicants. For the avoidance of doubts, and in order to reassure our citizens in diaspora that the passport process has been tried, tested, and proved in Nigeria, please note that the new process went live in Nigeria on January 8, 2024. And from inception till date, the number of applications online is over 100,000. 80% of these were approved without issues. 10% is awaiting approval because the supporting documents are undergoing verification. 6% have not completed their application process because they have not fully put their appointments, while 3% corroborating the explanation of my minister were queried for various reasons, such as a complete submission of reader documents, submission of poor quality documents or photographs. But uh, we have a good feedback mechanism in place which enables query applications to receive the required attention from both the applicants and our personnel. 
outline number four, how have you been able to achieve success? When I came on board on May 30th, 2023, my first self-assigned job was a thorough analysis of the passport regime. This led me to declare a state of emergency on the passport application process. The response to this was through the support of our technical partners, an increase in the supply of passport booklets to all our passport production centers. However, the coming of the Honorable Minister of Interior, Dr. Lumumi Tujuju, led to a major breakthrough and an expedited action on Nigerian passport processing policy. First and foremost, all the over 23,000 backlog of passport applications were cleared within two weeks. A feat which was celebrated both at home and abroad. To ensure that, new, that the new policy succeeds, several measures have been put in place under the able leadership of this same Honorable Dr. Urubu Junju. These measures include increased number of passport production machines in our various production centers, such as Ikui, Alausa, Festac, Ibadu, to mention a few. And there are provisions for more in the very near future. We also, uh, among this, also the increased number of back offices, workstations nationwide and in diaspora. This is to facilitate efficiency. We have specialized training in office, uh, training of officers, both locally and internationally, to enhance the capacity, capacity building and improve service delivery. Improved internet services to eliminate downtime in all passport offices nationwide. Provision for alternative source of energy, solar energy, 20 kVA inverters in all the 52 passport offices nationwide. Please take note, I said provisions for because it is in progress. We have the provisions and we'll be deploying that soon. Then training and deployment of document verification officers, DVOs, to the 774 local government areas in the nation. Provision of an increased AIE for passport control officers to ease the issue of logistics and discourage malpractices. This we are able to achieve through the proactive leadership of Honorable Minister Dr. Lubumitu Juju, who provided the required resources, technical know-how, and enabling environment for the success of this policy. You will agree with me that the Renewed Hope Agenda of uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu led administration has yielded a positive result in the matters of passport reforms. I therefore call on our diasporas to support our policy. Take time to understand the process, and I am confident that users will find our portal very friendly. I have the fifth one which is the step-by-step -step guidelines on how to navigate the process. But this can be seen on our website so that I will not take too much of our time. Well, with this, I say thank you all so much for listening. May God bless Nigeria. May God bless the home. May God bless everyone. Thank you so much.
good round of applause to the CG. For active CG. We are seeing from the minister, we are seeing from the CG. This is uh, heartwarming for Nigerians in the diaspora. All this put together by the chairman, chief executive of the Nigerians in the diaspora commission. Sorry, Gabriel. <laughs> I hope we didn't miss the milestone that I've been achieved in such a short time. So I want the media to know that, and I want us to appreciate um, the Minister of Interior and our Controller General once more, please. And this is coming from various comments I'm already receiving from the diaspora groups and associations. It's the doggedness of a woman. Excellent presentation. <laughs> Impressed with the matters as attained in a short space of time and several more. And then, uh, thank you, Honorable Minister Dr. Lubu Mitunji Ojo. This is simply incredible. And I thought we shouldn't lose that focus before we move to interventions. Thank you very much. Next, we have questions and answers and comments from participants. With uh, Raman, Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gabriel uh, Odu. I equally want to thank our CEO and Honorable Minister for that wonderful presentation. Uh, prior to now, we already have some intervention. I will put the leaders, and then uh, I will identify all the leaders from various uh, continents that. Uh, uh, we'll be able to speak and make it here. Uh, this is not a particular order, and the minister can take it or the controller general. And this is from Qatar. First of the new intervention team came to Qatar in October 2023 in collaboration with the Nigerian Embassy in Doha. They left after the capturing. Of course, the new one of all the new passports, new born babies. They promised to be the passports in the December 2023. They all to know and prevail. We could not get our passport since October 2023 to this February 2024. What is going on, man? We are trying here, please. We need help. This is from Qatar. Um, Another one, my name is Adel Dikola. I'm residing in Oman. I will be traveling to Nigeria just to process my passport. I would like to know the following. Can the passport be ready in a day? If not, how many days will it take? Is there an expedited uh, process? After capturing, if the passport is not ready in a day, can they be made to us in Oman? And that is what I need to do to make the processing faster before my arrival. That's from the Oman. The last one here, yeah, before I call uh, uh, Mr. Uche Okuko from Canada and Mr. Honorable Ayong, also from Canada, who have the intervention. Uh, I have a very pressing issue regarding my Spala Nigeria passport that I would like the Honorable Minister to address. Mm -hmm. This is from Odia Ogbebo. My Nigeria passport has expired since 2015. And since then, I have paid help to the immigration officers to review it for me. Then all effort give them no result. Because I have multiple entries in the Nigeria immigration system. I have been going to Nigeria missing visas. I submitted all the needed to prove that I'm the same person on the Sahara passport and the people's passport. I did as a result of trying to travel out of the country. Hence the different needs. I think his issue is that he also had a foreign passport that has the same between. So we need how can we resolve this uh, issue? I don't know. Maybe we should take this. Well, I think people are waiting waiting online. Oh, so okay. 
Since the okay. minister said uh, we're starting from Canada, I think it's appropriate to... Okay, let me, let me, let me take uh, Mr. Uche Ogugo is uh, one of the leaders in, the, in Canada. Okay. Please, can you come up with your intervention? Abi, can you enable Mr. Uche? Okay. 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 What, what of uh, uh, also from Canada? We want to hear from uh, if Canada is not ready, maybe we'll move to US. I can see US. I can see UK. Madewa is online. Okay, can I call Madewa? Okay. Uh yeah. Dr. Madewa from US. Yes. And uh, you just make your intervention. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon to those in Nigeria. Good afternoon, to <laughs> And to others in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Honorable Minister, my dear sister, the Comptroller General of Immigration, mm -hmm. Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa, this has been the most impressive and the most awe inspiring uh, mm -hmm. lecture that I've actually had to wake up so early in California to listen to. I'm highly, highly impressed with the achievements has thus far and with the synergy between the Comptroller General of Immigration, the Ministry of Immigration, and the Nigerian Diaspora Commission. The synergy of this team has produced effective, efficient, and very, very encouraging thus far. Certainly, Nigeria's new passport. There's a lot of echo. All right. Certainly, Nigeria's new passport policy processes for Nigerians in the diaspora exemplify a commendable stride towards enhancing accessibility and efficiency for citizens abroad. This will make it easier for us to go home as we need to, for our children who are first, second, and third generation Nigerians in the diaspora to be able to go through the seamless effort of obtaining Nigerian passports. The green passport is a symbol of pride. Nigerians excelling all over the place. Our passport is our identity. So we need to be proud of it. And we need to, we really appreciate the seamless efforts that is being put in place by the Honorable Minister. These streamlined procedures and expanded services, the achievements, the points reflect a proactive approach to addressing the needs of the Nigerians in diaspora. This is fostering a stronger sense of connection and support for those living outside. I really, really appreciate the initiative, which is undoubtedly going to contribute to facilitating smoother interactions with the Nigerian government, enhancing the Nigerian economy, and improving the livelihood or the socioeconomic status of our Nigerians all over the place, especially those in Nigeria. We in the diaspora are very, very committed. The reason we want to always be home is like no matter where you are, no matter where you lay your head, you only have really one country at heart, and that country is Nigeria. So we appreciate you. My um, observation so far, uh, I've lived in the U.S. for over 30 years. I've gone through several processes of trying to renew passports from the days of the, of the mission in San Francisco to New York to D.C. to, um, to, to Atlanta. And I have to tell you, when I took my children to Nigeria in November, for the Nigerian Diaspora Investment Summit, which I coordinated, their passports had expired. Just for the fact that they were able to travel to Nigeria with me without having to stress and struggle to get visas, that there were visas on arrival was really, really commendable. It really eased my stress. It made things more you know, effective for me. So I appreciate that. And then we started the process of renewing their passport. Oh, that is like, oh, okay, well, we did not have to go through any stress. So I thank you so much for making this process very, very simple 
you know, for us all. So that is basically it. However, in the United States, we need more passport printing printers in all the different in the United States. So we'll appreciate that. Thank you very much. And our regards to our people in California. Thank you. Uh, let us take two more, and then the Honorable Minister will respond, especially from Canada. Okay. Uh, we should take all the intervention. Canada, are they on now? Uh, Mr. Uche Okugo, are you there? Mr. Awoduni, also from Canada. Are you Awoduni? Okay, I can see Kaluk Shaman. Are you Akife? Yes, uh, good afternoon, sir. Please. Can you hear me? Your intervention should not be more than two minutes, sir. Two minutes, okay, I'll make it very brief. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, um, all protocols duly observed. The Honorable Minister, um, the controller of the Nigerian Immigration Service, and of course, um, the chair of NITCOM, our own Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa, to pronounce it properly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in Kanuk, um, I will just be very brief. <laughs> we have about 130 member organizations. Kanuk is the umbrella body of all the organizations in the UK. We've got about 130. Now, seven out of 10 calls to the Nigerian High Commission in the UK are passport related. I myself receive at least 15 phone calls a day that are passport related. My vice chair, one of my, we've got two chairpersons. One of them is vice chair passports. That is all she does. Um, Miss Olaju Bokaria, she too, she receives about 15 calls a day that are passport related. She's actually put together, what we've done is we put together a passport liaison committee. So when you have problems, you email the passport liaison committee, then on a weekly basis, the passport liaison committee meets with the high commission, the immigration staff there, and we we'll go through all these problems. Now, I'm raising all this so that I think it's important that NITCOM and the immigration service are aware of the headaches we have. Now, one big problem we have, I'll start with, I'm getting about four or five. One, NIN agents. We've got about 55 NIN agents who are licensed by NIMSIS to operate in the UK. But not all of them are credible. Some of them are unscrupulous. Some of them are not functioning. So one thing I want you to look at, NIMSIS in particular, can Canuck and the High Commission here have a little bit of a say in the vetting of these agencies so that they don't rip our people off. That's one. Two, I like to talk about um, you know, cut, cutting down on this need for travel because our people who are in Scotland, in Newcastle, in Leeds, in Manchester, in Birmingham, they need local areas where they can do their, you know, get, get their digital information captured and you know, do their biometrics without having to travel to London. So um, hopefully that will be something, even if it's done on a regional basis, um, will be it will help a lot. It will save, you know, sometimes you, see, you get families of six traveling down to London. They have to take time off work. They have to take kids out of school. It's very, very inconveniencing from our people and we get all the calls. So we want you to look at that. One other thing we also want you to look at, um, the minister. There used to be a fast track service whereby if in an emergency, you had to travel, you could pay and get your passport within 48 hours. And would like you to look at that. Can that service please be restored? Because it will help immensely. Um, now, um, going on, we have um, 27 regional associations, you know, Nigerian Community in Scotland, Nigerian Yorkshire Community Network, Nigerian Community in Manchester, Nigerian Community in Liverpool. What we are doing with all these organizations is we are encouraging them to organize open days whereby we have NIN registration. And what Canuck does is we take a NIN agent, the, you know, the three or four we work with who we can rely on. We take them to the regions and they do everybody, you know, one day. So um, what we have found is, um, yeah, if we have a bit more support in terms of, um, you know, 
digital capturing machines being made available to the staff here in the in the mission, we can probably you know extend that and do a bit more biometric capturing on a regional basis as well. Now, I'm sure my two minutes is nearly up, so um, I'll just be very, very brief and say... Um, thank you very much, sir. Ah, my two minutes is already up. Okay, all right, thank you. We Can look you forward to having both in the diaspora day. Send the remaining question to our email, Yes. and then we'll pass it to the Honorable Minister to attend. Okay, okay. okay thank you. <laughs> uh, Okay, I want to call on the uh, Chairman Naido, UK South. Mr. Ni Isakios, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here, sir. <laughs> okay, please go ahead. Two minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I stand on existing uh, protocols. I also want to say a very big congratulations to um, the Honorable Minister. I also want to say a big congratulations to the Controller General of Immigration. I want to say a big thank you to uh, Dr. Uh, Abike Dabiririwa of NEEDCOM, the CEO of NEEDCOM. Um, Mr. Ayo Akinfe has actually taken the shine of all I want to say, but I want to add that number one, passports, you know, um, Issuance, renewal and issuance is a very big problem to every one of us in diaspora. And it is a welcome development that um, the Honorable Minister and Immigration um, are doing all they can to ensure that there is a seamless you know, um, process to which we can all have, um, get our passports within you know, a reasonable time. We have a, a very a number of our diasporans calling every now and then. And we will be very happy to see that this process becomes fully automated. And my fear, apart from the fact that we have fully automated everything now, going forward is for us to be able to maintain the standard and improve on it on a daily basis so that the efforts will not be wasted. You know, my major fear about we Nigerians is that we can't maintain what we have started. And most of the time, that is our fear. And I hope that the uh, present uh, initiative will be sustained effectively and the diaspora uh, community will be happy with all that we are doing every now and then and that uh, we can you know, eliminate wastages and time, uh, wastages of time invested in getting passports. And um, I want to say that this is a welcome development. Kindly keep it up. And I believe that there will be a lot of, um, you know, pro uh, progress. But before I, you know, hand over, uh, I want to say that the last intervention that the immigration department and embassy had in um, Manchester has been giving us a lot of problems. Many people that participated in that, you know, intervention have never received their passport, and we get calls from communities here and there. Can we please look into that and maybe we can have an answer at this meeting today, at this, at this webinar today. Thank you so much. Very grateful for inviting me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. We quickly want to move to Africa now. Uh, uh, Mr. Durazak Abaka, the last president at uh, Diaspora South Africa. Are you on there? Yes, thank you. Durazak uh, Abaka. From South Africa. Go ahead. Yeah, Go ahead. two minutes. Two uh, minutes. Okay, standing on existing protocol and uh, all protocol duty observed. So I want to read out the questions from the Nigerian students in diaspora. As the honorable honorable minister I for this said that it's high time that technology takes its stance in our society. So now I want to ask how accessible is the online application or capturing process? Can persons with disabilities Confident they use the online system without a third party assistant. That's number one. Number two, students in diaspora experience delay in passport renewal because of uh, the extension of validity process. And what this means is that if their passports are not expired and their study visas are expired, they could miss the renewal of their visa because the extension of validity has not been approved. The question is on, uh, uh, on the online system. 
If a passport is not expired but required to be renewed, how efficient will the process be? Does it still need approval from the headquarters in Abuja? Thirdly, the topic of nine has not received effective attention in the diaspora, mainly because of limited access to information and um, um, the extensive cost of the process. How can the ministry assist and the commission assist in circulating this information, working with the student body uh, uh, in the diaspora? And the last question I want to ask is issue regarding the, um, um, the fees that has been imposed by most Nigerian missions uh, when uh, uh, the administrative fees regarding pass when you want to renew your passport, how can the missions and the commission um, assist the Nigerian students in diaspora to waive such administrative costs on uh, on the student? Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, for, very much for, for keeping to the time. Since we're in Africa, let me quickly take uh, Mr. Abiodun Oyebola. is the chairman Naidu Sirialun. If you are there. Let's have your intervention, please. Mr. Abiodun, you follow? Okay, if not, we'll go back to Canada. Is King Wale Adesoya, the national chairman of Nigeria and Canadian Business Network. King Wale Adesoya. Hi, how are you doing? Two minutes. Two minutes. Thank you very much for uh, this great uh, conversation with the Minister uh, uh, Tonji Ojo and uh, the Controller General. Thank you, Honorable Abike Dabri, for hosting this first one. I hope this will uh, to, uh, to happen and as we go along. Uh, in Canada, um, I'm also glad that you know the focus has been in, in Canada for the test run. Uh, we appreciate uh, both uh, our keynote speakers, you know, for focusing on Canada, and we won't let you down. I can tell you that uh, because you know the staff, the NIS staff here, TT uh, Olaya, it's you know doing a great job, and I'm sure they're kind of, they ready to, uh, to, you know, to experiment with you and make sure that you know things are going uh, well. The problem that I think I see. Uh, in Canada is the NIM um, acquisition. And I'm hoping that, you know, the minister will make it possible for uh, people, uh, for organizations like the, um, the NCBN to be able to uh, maybe help in, um, you know, uh, help people with their NIM, you know. Uh, hopefully we can talk about that. Uh, there's a way we can uh, assist, you know, in, in making sure that all Nigerians in Canada have their NIM, you know. So that would be uh, my key thing. Uh, I thank you for, you know, all, I mean, this initiative. Uh, and um, I was just joking about uh, the idea of, um, you know, a doctor, you know, all over me, Tunji uh, Ojo as a DOT, you know, I like the initial. Anyway. Afon, thank you very much for inviting us from Canada. I presume you are done. Yes. Can you thank hear? you? Are you not able to hear me? Uh well, we were able to... <laughs> we we picked some of which. Uh do you want to recap? Yeah, I just want to say thank you uh for this great event. Can can you hear me now? Yes, very well. Okay, I want to say thank you for this great initiative. Uh, sorry about the uh, the first uh, take on it that you know it wasn't that uh, that great. Um, but I won't take too much of your time. I, I think that one of the big problems here is the NIM. I hope that you know the uh, the minister will engage you know like um, organizations like the uh, NCBN to be able to. to uh, cap, you know, get the NIM uh, to all Nigerians, you know, look, uh, you know, as fast as fast as possible. Uh, the Kanuk uh, people said that you know it's all about credibility. Yes, it is, and we uh, the minister need to deal with um, um, reputable organizations like you know the Nido Outfits and the um, and the uh, uh, the established organizations to be able to. Uh, get the NIM to people so that they can get their uh, passport as soon as possible. 
So, well, thank you very much for inviting us. I don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, we are glad that Canada is, you know, being focused on, and we are we are ready. We are ready to uh, uh, partner with the uh, federal government to be, make sure that you know um, the experiment is um, uh, is fast and um, and that's about it. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Oh, th thank you very much for for that uh, intervention. Uh, next, I want to call on uh, Uche Okugo, also from Canada. You Canadian, you are lucky. <laughs> thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Can you uh, hear me first? Let me confirm. Very well, very well. Thank you so much. Uh, the Honorable Minister, uh, the NITCOM CEO, and our guest speaker, CG of NIS. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. I'll be very quick. Um, I have a sense that we're quite pressed for time. I am the president of Network of Nigerians in Canada. It's an organization with presence in about six provinces. And we have developed a good relationship with NITCOM. In October last year, we hosted the NITCOM CEO in the city of Brampton, where she met with the mayor. She met with uh, Nigerian business owners and stakeholders, as well as she had a town hall with the Nigerian community. And one of the key takeaways from that town hall was the need to have a Nigerians in Canada database, as that isn't existing yet. So we are currently working alongside with Councillor Ayo Wodini, uh, Wodini to pull this project together, and that is in progress. There has been a couple of uh, passport intervention, especially in the mid northern part of Canada, and, but there is need to do a lot more. And we look forward to this pilot project solving <laughs> most of the challenges because just as the CG NIS mentioned, why people fly four, five, six hours from the uh, the uh, the mid northern parts, people also drive four to five hours from areas in the Greater Toronto area, because that is that uh, it's that far to Ottawa. So we are hoping that in future this will actually be a location where um, focus will be given. The population right now of Nigerians in Canada is about 200,000 people, and about half of that actually is resided in and around the GTA. So you can see that heavy concentration, and so attention should be given to that region. Um, as a way of a suggestion, going forward, aside from having multiple NIM locations and uh, focused passport intervention, it might also make economic sense to have like a consul general's office where the consular services will be uh, situated say in Toronto, for example, to cater for the over 100,000 people, Nigerians in and around the GTA. And so this will be my suggestion and this will be my, my hope going forward. Um, once again, we thank the minister. We thank um, the CEO of NISCOM, Honorable Abike Dabiri, for this invitation. And we, can, uh, we continue to be hopeful. We continue to look forward to, to the best applicable. It is not worthy to mention that the Greater Toronto Area comprises of about 25 cities and Nigerians are heavily situated in this neighborhood. So once again, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, you uh, very much uh, uh, Mr. Uche Okugo, for that uh, intervention. Uh, I just want to let us know that we also have uh, uh, our diaspora here from the US, a medical professor. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I want to call on Australia. Is the chairperson uh, Remy Jusu? President, Australia, Council of Nigeria Association, the president Remy Jusu. The chairperson, are you there? Uh, what of Dr. Pedus Ewiama? Also from Australia. Dr. Ewiyama, can we have your intervention from Australia? Well, while we are waiting for Australia to come up, let me go to Saudi Arabia. She's here. Please come up. From Australia, Remy Yusu or Dr. Ewiyama. They are deep into the night now, so they are so let us. Uh... This is Remy Yusu. 
Present Council of Nigeria Association. I think we can go to other region. Why? Yes. Now, uh, it's Professor Bapa Adam from Saudi Arabia, Dr. Ibrahim Bello, Dr. Abba El Guja from uh, Nido KSA. Dr. Bashir Abashikola from the UK, Nido UK, Nido Europe, sorry, sorry. Dr. Bashir, are you there? Oh. Um, what of Mr. Abiodu Oyebola, Nido Sierra Leone? Shaman Nido Sierra Leone, Mr. Abiodu Oyebola. Okay, let's have you. Two minutes. All right. All right. Good afternoon, Honorable Minister. Uh, good afternoon, our very dear Chairman of NITCOM, and uh, good afternoon, the CG of Immigration and uh, other distinguished guests. <laughs> My my contribution is not directly <clears throat> related to each class of passport in diaspora, but it's relevant. Uh, three quick questions I want to ask. <clears throat> we noticed over the years in Nigeria, when you are leaving Nigeria or when you are coming in, when you are approaching the immigration desk, <clears throat> There's usually a desk. If you meet uh, some officers in uh, Mofchi, they take your passport, they look at our passports, uh, then pass it on, pass it on to the immigration officers who are always in uniform. <clears throat> Sorry, if you are talking about the cost of uh, governance, reducing the uh, cost of governance, I think, in my opinion, those officers in Mufti that we don't know exactly who they are. What they are checking can also be integrated to what the immigration officer is doing to check. Because all over the world when we travel, it's only in Nigeria that you go to two, two desks before you can get your passport stamped in or stamped out. So that's my first observation. Second one <clears throat> is that which is related to the movement of our people again. Uh, I really uh, praise the Honorable Minister, the courage and what he has done so far to ease this problem. But uh, there are emergency situations where some of our people will have to travel, maybe that they lost, uh, They've lost uh, relatives over the weekend when the embassy missions have closed and uh, they don't have a passport ready. Uh, is it possible to integrate the ETC on the <clears throat> online uh, passport system whereby they can put in their data and, and get a an, uh, temporary approval for them to travel to meet that urgent uh, need to travel? That's the uh, second, uh, second one. The third one, which uh, I think is going to be very shocking to hear, is that we got news <clears throat> of what is going on to frustrate the efforts, these laudable efforts of government in sanitizing our identity system. The minister has said a couple of times, I've been watching on China's news, China's television, when he was talking about uh, a handshake between uh, the immigration and the identity management commission. Uh, and say, I spoke about it a couple of times today as a handshake. Honorable Minister, you will be shocked to hear that <clears throat> what is going on by some unscrupulous elements of Nigerians is that now you will still see foot shake, not handshake again. What do I mean? People are using their toes for biometrics. And this is very sad, because this is going to totally frustrate the efforts of government and the huge sums of money and efforts put in. 
to sanitize our identity that we can be respected anywhere you see. You present your ID card, you present your passport that can be respected because they know that it contains nothing but correct information about you. Thank you. Thank so you very we much. Want to, we want to pay attention to the minister to that where people are using their, their toes as biometric instead of their fingers. So that's why our own observation that we are bringing it from uh, Sylvia alone. Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I learned uh, Dr. Abiba Adamu is back online and Remy Yusuf from Australia. Yes, uh, uh, okay. Oh, Saudi Arabia, Professor Adamu from Saudi Arabia, are you back online? Let me do so from Australia. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Okay, let's take a uh, Abu Bakar. Hello. 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 Hello, can you all hear me? Very well, we can hear you. Okay. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, uh, has been introduced. My name is Dr. Abubakar Adamu. All protocol duly observed. Uh, our Honorable Minister, hardworking Honorable Minister, hardworking Controller General of uh, the Immigration and the Needcom, hardworking workaholic DG of uh, the diaspora. We we really really appreciate this great uh, great lecture. Uh, regarding Nigerians uh, accessing passport easily. Uh, I'm here from uh, Saudi Arabia. Actually, I'm the chairman of uh, Nigeria Saudi uh, Chamber of Commerce, at the same time a lecturer at uh, Institute of Public Administration. Uh, we welcome really this development uh, and we hope it will uh, reap uh, uh, you know, a positive result, and it will be maintained as one of our uh, brethren mentioned. Uh, second, secondly, I would like to add that, if possible, we have lots of uh, uh, people who could not understand English, especially within the diaspora, especially here in Saudi Arabia, in Jeddah, in 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 Mecca, some in Tabuk, some far away from uh, uh, from the city center, from Jeddah or from, from Riyadh. So this will definitely help them. And if possible, uh, uh, an, an option for uh, three major languages of Nigeria should be added uh, so that people will be able to, uh, to, to, to process their passports themselves. This is what I want to uh, request. And if it is there, which will be wonderful so that someone can just uh, process his passport without looking for someone to do it for him if it is in English, especially to those that cannot understand English, especially to those that only speak Hausa or Yoruba or Igbo, that they should be able to access the, 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 the passport in different, uh, uh, the service in different languages. Uh, actually, this is a wonderful initiative initiative and we hope inshallah it will be sustained and nothing will come in between uh to frustrate the effort of his uh, uh honorable minister of the honorable minister and the cg and uh, the diaspora commission thank you so much for giving us this opportunity thank you so much for this wonderful initiative thank you thank you dr adam shukran uh now can we go back to australia Mrs. Remy Yusuf, are you there now? Yes. Doctor Redios, we really want to hear from the Australian. Doctor Redios, we from Australia. Oh, Mrs. Remy Yusuf. Okay. I think she's having issue in connectivity because she said she can hear us. <laughs> Please come on now. Okay. Okay. What? Okay. Yes. This um, 
I think because for want of time, yes, and I want us to finish at four, as we yes, said. As we and CJ and Minister has uh, they still have a lot of questions. Yes. And then we have okay, now, um, round up here sorry, can you yes. hear me? No, 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 Hello? Uh, Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Anyway, go ahead. Oh, okay, finally. Um, good morning from Melbourne. <clears throat> it's almost to it's one thirty here. Sorry about everything. I will make it very snappy. I will act on existing protocol and um welcome everyone and thank everyone. Um, we just want to say that we are blessed to be part of this and thank you for inviting us to join. The major issue is that Australia is always neglected in everything. Um, whenever diasporans are mentioned, other than Madam, uh, Madam Honorable Dabiri, no one talks about Australia in anything. And we want the Diaspora Commission and the immigration and all the government agencies to know that Australia do exist. We have a lot of international students here that um, we organize passport intervention for. We actually, because Australia is very big and in land mass, so everywhere is very far from everywhere. So we always bring the, the immigration people from the commission to each of the states and people have to travel, sometimes seven hours to get their passport. So with this new, um, with this new countless biometrics, it will be beneficial to all of us. So some people have talked about our concerns, so I'm not going to repeat them in depth, I'll just mention them. So the number one thing is the need to travel. Right now we have problems with Innovate One, we are always having problem with that. Are we going to be sure that once we go to the uh, with the countless biometrics, we're not going to be having the same problems we have with Innovate One. Sometimes people will pay, Innovate One will not give them receipt. They will pay double. They will not get refunded. Or sometimes they will not even get anything to show that they have paid. So if um, that can be taken into account when doing this countless biometrics. And the other thing too is that, as uh, someone said, mentioned it, we have a lot of international students and the fees here are just enormous. And they are charged, other than going there, if it's really urgent and they can't meet the time that we bring the people to the different states, they are charged money to, um, you know, by the commission or by immigration to get their passports done. How can we alleviate this? Or is this money still going to be applicable if they are doing the countless biometrics? So I'll just keep it as that. And I will let Dr. Pedus add to it if he has to, um, if he has something to add to it. But the important thing is that the NIN, actually, the NIN is another thing. We only have one agent in the whole of Australia that's functional at this time. So I'm going to um, implore, she's really spoken for us in the past, for us to have an agent here to do NIN for us. But we have one right now. That's in person of Honorable uh, W. Erewa. If we can have more people, because we are growing in population here in Australia, and it will be very important if we have more people that can do that, so that when the countless um, start, biometric starts, it won't be uh, an impediment for people to be able to participate in that. Thank you. Thank you. Is going to our fellows there? Okay.
<clears throat> we have about 45 questions online. Yes. But we have some here. We can't take all, but we get on answers. One says, Nigeria porous borders is a serious concern for many in the diaspora. Uh, has the interior minister thought of creating out a border enforcement team and inject diaspora expert input with zero impact on his budget? Then another one, the organity you have for your people is in a problem at Lagos Airport for frequent diaspora flyers. <laughs> have you thought of setting up online complaints uh, form link to your office mm. to root out this bad element in NIS? Um, like I said, we can't take everything, but we take as many as okay. uh, Will the backlog from the previous system be cleared before the new initiative starts on March 8th? The fear is that if this is not so, there's likely to be an unholy interplay between the old and the new, which will be which will be adverse to the progress of the new system. That's from um, Adifoyeke Adidiju. He is an immigration attorney. Then also from Oduayo says, I applied since October. Can the minister help me expedite action to get my passport, please? I applied since October 2023 and yet to receive my passport. But I think the new process will take care of all that. Then from passport, Tokwe uh, Fawora. We changed our family name, and I was told to bring all my documents for my family members to Abuja for them to process the new passport. It took me almost 11 years to change my passport from old surname to a new surname. Please, what is the way forward to change my children's passport for them to be able to travel to Nigeria? I will not want them to go through this again. From a Nido Sweden executive, Nido Sweden, they say we receive our passports within 24 hours, as long as the applicant fulfills all requirements. How long will this take with this new process? Will the passport be delivered from Nigeria or the mission, embassy of residence? One other challenge that we have sometimes encountered is online payment. I would like to know if this has been, has been improved with this new system. Frank Oye Kualu, President of Nigeria Citizens Association South Africa. How can we get assistance with registration of NIM in South Africa? So they say I have issues with NIM in South Africa. Then from Temi Fatono, um, very much interested in this process. How does this new initiative help application that is currently active? So in other words, about our active application, how do you now do with this one? He has a long story, but I think that's just the key question. So I'm not sure we can read everything, but we'll forward everything to you. But I think that's the crux of the whole home with my expired passport and renew it in Nigeria. I hold a valid US passport. Well, there's a unique one here yeah. from Malaysia. It okay. was it was in jail. The passport got expired. Now it's out of jail. So uh, it's having difficulty from Malaysia. So how can we now uh, renew the passport? Is that as if we apply? I think we can just have um, a take these questions. Then have Professor Mani and uh, Professor Nsu we just round up, and then we will take it from them. Thank you very much. Yeah, we call on the honourable minister first. Honourable uh, minister, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much um, for, for very um, wonderful very questions. Um, well, let me start from the interventions. I think the bottom line. I I listened quite well, attentively to most of the questions, and I think maybe borders down to some of. Um, or the things that we're trying to do that probably maybe uh, people don't have a full grasp of um, what we're trying to do. 
Uh, what we're trying to do basically is to eradicate uh, movement from one place to another, especially for renewal of passports. That's basically what we're trying to do. And um, this intervention, personally, I don't believe in interventions. I understand that prior to this moment, yes, interventions might have been necessary for one or two reasons, but we all know that intervention is, um, I mean, is soft, I mean, could be abused, brings corruption, brings a um, um, lot of stress, and of course, still doesn't solve the problem because. So for us, what we're trying to do now with the intervention of um, the contactless application system is to ensure that we do not need intervention again. The whole idea, in a nutshell, is to make sure that we have an immigration office or a high commission on everybody's phone so to say that's exactly what we're trying to say so basically at the moment in nigeria what we do you apply you upload you do everything online your picture is online the only thing that takes you to an immigration office as we speak now in nigeria is just only your finger your biometric that's your biometric capsule and that is what we are now trying to 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 take out because we understand that we already have your biometric features anyway in our database we have it already so the only thing we need is for to be sure that you are who you say you are and the applicant is actually the applicant is so to say so bringing in the contactless biometric solution is to ensure that for verification and authentication purposes. We know you are who you say you are. Once we are able to capture, and don't forget that biometric alone is not just about fingerprint. It deals with the eyes. It deals with other biometric features. So once we capture it, we we, it, we query our database. And of course, we see that the biometric features are the same. It shows that you are who you say you are. So finish your application wherever you are. We career your passport to you. The whole idea, as I said, is to make sure that you do not go through stress. Like what I said, renewed hope. It's not about business as usual. Renewed hope is all about business unusual, doing things in an unusual way, doing things in a different way to meet expectations of people. That's exactly what we're trying to do. Technology is a catalyst. It's to make situations, make conditions, make reactions better. We want our people to have a better stake. We want our people to be able to solve all problems, you know, without um, having to go the extra mile. Yes, we understand that we must find this, we must strike a delicate balance between security and of course convenience, but we cannot sacrifice one for one. We have to find a way of marrying the two, of making sure that we do not compromise the security of our passport, the security of the of the um, passport uh, holder, and of course, the convenience of even the, the citizens must also not be compromised. So this is solution is to strike that delicate balance, you know, between security and convenience. So on intervention, I know there were questions on intervention from different countries. I believe the CG will speak to that. But and I can assure you, after this meeting, I'll personally I will speak with the CG to furnish me with all the list of interventions that uh, all the list of interventions probably in the last one year, and let us know those that uh, they are yet to deliver their passports. And in no time, we have to expedite action as soon as soon as possible to make sure that these passports are actually delivered to the applicants. But as I said, after March eight. I do not see a future for intervention anymore. Interventions will no longer be necessary because with your phone, you can actually intervene on your own behalf. You don't need somebody to intervene for you. You don't need NIS to intervene for you because when you reduce human contact, you reduce corruption. When you reduce human contact, you reduce abuse. When you reduce human contact, you will automatically reduce um unnecessary circumvention of the system. So these are the things that we're trying to do to make sure that people are actually in charge of their own destiny and Nigerians can be comfortable, Nigerians can be happy, and Nigerians can be excited, knowing fully well that there's a government that cares about them and a government that wants things to be done in an unusual way, but in a very comfortable manner. So on the issue of intervention, the CG will speak about that, but I assure you going forward, there will be very minimal uh, list. There will be very min minimal need you know, for future interventions. Then from Canuck, 
um, issue of NIMSI um, FEPs, I will speak with the DG NIMSI on all the issues in Canada, in Australia, in uh, Saudi Arabia, and in all, I mean, I've, I've taken note of so many places. So we will critically evaluate the FEPs. And of course, look at the possibility, which I think makes a lot of sense, working with the Nigerian diaspora communities in these places to ensure that uh, at the end of the day, we, are, we carry them along in the NIN acquisition process and in uh, in the enrollment of these FEPs, front-end uh, providers, you know, front-end um, providers. So we will, I will speak with the DG NIMSI and ensure that at least um, we're able to, I know she's doing fantastically well, you know, she had cleared backlog of over 2.4 million applications, and she's doing fantastically well in terms of um, of uh, rebranding and in terms of uh, um, putting technology, you know, into play. But there is, and um, I think there there is need for collaboration with NITCOM. There's need for collaboration with uh, diaspora communities in various countries, so that in terms of the NIMSI issue, so that we can solve individual issues as they arrive. Because the, from what I have seen, there is no size fits all. That's just the truth. The problem in UK might not be the same in Canada, might not be. So we must work with the Nigerian communities in all of in these places to ensure that we're able to give them uh, uh, a tailored fitted solutions to their issues. So then on um, biometric enrollment center, as I said, for renewers, we will not need to go to biometric enrollment centers of creating front offices. The initial idea when I came in as minister was oh, to open more front end offices, more biometric enrollment center. But be between you and I, it's not gonna solve the problem. You know, people are who you apply. People acquire UK passport. People apply acquire American passport without going to do further biometric. So for us, biometric is just a verification stage. That's just especially for renewal. But let me say this clearly: biometric uh, contactless biometric will only be applicable to renewers because we already have their biometric um, data in our database only for. Renewers, so it's important. I say that, and more than 70 75 percent of our applicants are actually for renewers. So, if you are a Nigerian, you know you only have to go to an immigration office perhaps maybe once in a lifetime. You know, after that, any subsequent renewal, you know, you can do that on your phone. So, basically, biometric enrollment center. If you have, if you open a biometric enrollment center, maybe in one part of people will still need to travel there hotel and also still we might be reducing this price but that will not be solving the problem so that's why we think technology should instead be allowed to solve that problem so we spoke about the uh, maintenance of the of the system well we can i can assure you that uh, what we are after is about bring, building strong institutions, not about build, um, about building strong people. No, it's about the institution. It's about NIS. It's about Nigeria. It's about knowing fully well that an institution that will um, outlive all of us, which is what is most important, there will always be Nigeria. There will not always be a me. There will not, there might not always be a you because every man has a terminal date. I mean, regardless of how old we, we, uh, we pray to live for, but Nigeria will always be Nigeria by the grace of God. So we must build strong system. And that's what we're trying to do, build a system for NIS that we are sure that post this administration, post Bumitunyo as Minister of Interior, post uh, Karola Uralas uh, CG Nigeria Immigration Service, post President Bola Ahmed Tinubu as President of Nigeria, we will have an NIS that will be built on the premise, on the foundation of performance, effective performance needed for effective service delivery. And that's what we're working for. Now, South Africa, you spoke about how accessible is the online platform. Yes, I think pretty accessible. We have tried it for one month in Nigeria. And I can assure you that um, in the last one month, as I said, the query rate is just about 3%, which by any standard in the world is not a bad uh, solution. We've had over 100 applicants already, and the solution is doing very, very well. So I think uh, some of these uh, uh, points have been um, taken into consideration in building 
a solution that will be able to stand the test of um, time. Then if a passport hasn't expired, can you process renewal? Why not? You can always process renewal of your passport. And we also advise people to try to um, renew their passport a couple of months, few months, maybe three months or thereabout before the expiration of the passport so that not to cause um, a rush. So that is um, agreed. Then we spoke about the student uh, administrative and waiving fee. I can tell you we're in constant discussion. In fact, there's a committee that's been set up uh, between Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the NIS with regards to multiple some charges at the foreign missions and et cetera that affects the diaspora. So I can assure you that very soon, will streamline all charges and make sure that uh, Nigerians are not ripped off. That is actually in the in the pipeline. We're already working on that as we speak. Then Canada spoke about the NIN acquisition. As I said, there is need to collaborate with the diaspora communities. That's what I have been able to deduce. One of the things I've been able to deduce from, um, from this particular um, um, meeting. Then I saw a question which has to do with change of data. Yes, there's a category of change of data that can be done without recourse to Abuja, but for people with stolen, I think is this stolen passport and I mean uh, lost passports and some issues, of course, there are certain categories which the uh, CG will be able to expatiate on that you still need, you know, can only be done from the service um headquarters in one or two areas, because as I said, we cannot compromise security on the premise of uh, comfort. We have to strike a balance, you know, between between convenience and of course, um, security. Then Mr. Uche Okugo spoke about focused passport intervention. Well, as I said, we hope to reduce passport intervention to the BRS minimum. To me, I saw how much people pay for passport intervention and et cetera. I think it's, I mean, I feel for Nigerians and I understand that this is not, it's not sustainable. So for me, the key issue is for us to be able, as I said, make sure that every Nigerian has an immigration office on his phone. This is 2024. This is the 21st century, and we must act it. In our, indeed, we must act. We must actually make sure that we allow technology to play its role. It's not novel. It's what's done in the US. It was done in the UK and in other countries. And I believe that Nigeria, the biggest black nation on earth, the giant of Africa, should also lead in in terms of uh, security of our documents and, of course, ensuring that Nigerians have um, Nigerians are comfortable and can acquire service, good service, you know, the comfort of their homes. Then uh, you spoke about consular service in um, Greater Toronto. Well, um, that's a good suggestion. We'll look into that um, with uh, foreign affairs and see how that works out. But of course, I can't give a commitment <laughs> on that uh, now. Then we spoke about Australia. Mrs. Remy Yusuf spoke about... Um, NIM, which is also an issue we, I think, have addressed. Spoke about distance from one place to another, contactless biometric, we actually solved that. He spoke about Innovate One issues, which has to do with payment. I think that uh, the Innovate One solution, because what we have said is that there must be multiple payment options in terms of platforms. It must, it must not just be Innovate One. There must be multiple. Nigerians should have option. You know, this is not a monopolistic market. So the payment um, uh, pro service provider that uh, people are comfortable with, people should be able to pick. You cannot, uh, you can, you can't force um, a single service provider or payment platform. You know, you can't force it down the throat of people. I stand for that. I believe in. Uh, I don't believe in monopoly. So, and we have given that instruction. I think at the moment we have multiple payment options on the on the automated system as we speak. Then from Syria alone, we spoke about. Um, uh, the uh, immigration people stop you. As I said, we're already working on that. You know, the good thing is you need to see the command center that we have built. The command center, which is, um, I think, is the is the is the first. Uh, 
AI API, interactive API solution in Africa. I think so, is what we're building for Nigeria. And uh, under the leadership of President Bola Tinubu is, is a wonderful one. All our five international airports are connected. So we can view anybody coming in from any of the five airports uh, we can pre-profile you. We can go into the database. We know maybe you are a person of interest or not. The whole idea is that by the time this comes to life, we're already concluding. We hope that by March, we'll be able to conclude it. Hopefully, all the five airports, we have installed the ones in, in, in uh, Namdaziku International Airport already in Abuja. The one, the 16 meant for Lagos. We arrive definitely next week, the E-Gate. The whole idea is that when you come to Nigeria, there's no need to be stamping your passport anymore. You're coming back to your country for crying out loud. Why do you need an immigration officer if you're not a person of interest? So once you come, you put your passport, scan your passport, look into your, uh, what they call the camera, we record you in our system that you're already in your country, you walk through and you go. You know, you nobody needs to ask you any question. You are coming to your home home. You are coming to a place that you call a home, a place that is actually your home. There should be that comfort. There should be that confidence. There should be that joy, that happiness coming into Nigeria. When I, when you go to Heathrow or you go to JFK or anywhere in the world, you see uh, foreigners oh, talking to immigration officers. Uh, British people, you just go, you get, you go and that's it. Nobody stops you because you are coming to your home. That is the, that is your right. It's, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a thing of joy that you are in Nigeria. So these are the things that we want to do. So from by the grace of God, with the e-gates that we are bringing on board, all this issue of meeting people, or God, what you bring home, what did all those things we stop. When you want to, if you know you want to avoid abuse, then you must reduce human interface. You must reduce it to the barest minimum. And that's what we are trying to do with the e-gates now. And of course, with the advanced passenger information, we, we pre-profile you. If you are coming to Nigeria, we will have pre-profiled you. Immigration officers don't have laser in their eyes. That is when they see you, that they will say, oh, maybe you are a terrorist or you are not a terrorist, maybe you are a person of interest. And how will they know by just looking at you? Technology should help them to do the job. So that is the essence of the advanced passenger information system that is coming up in the month of March. And of course, the e-gate. So at the end of the day, come back. When you come to Nigeria, you are a Nigerian. No more interface with immigration. Put your passport, scan it, look into it. We look at your database. We look at our database. If you are not, we look at Interpol. We look at security database. We look at them. If you are not a person of interest, please just walk through the e-gate and go enjoy life in your own country. That is exactly the experience that we are trying to bring. So I want to assure um, my brother from Sierra Leone that this is the reason why we have the e-gate. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, by my, by the time people come for Easter, Nigeria said that's why when you come for Easter to Lagos, to Abuja, to Posako, to Kano, to Enugu, I want to assure you for the five international airports, it will be a sweet experience laden with renewed hope in action and not just in words. Then we spoke about abuse in NIMSI biometric enrollment system that people are using their tools and et cetera. Yes, that's why we have a secondary layer of verification. We have our own database. We have NIMSI's database. So at the end of the day, when, when you, if, you're, if your biometric on your own database does not align with that of NIMSI, then there is a problem. We will not be able to, you won't be able to go ahead. You have to come to the office to do this. So we have a backup thing because we understand that when people see convenience, people will always try to abuse it. Some people will try to abuse it. But our responsibility, as I said, we were not voted to make excuses. I, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu did not appoint me to make excuses. He appointed me to do my best to make sure renewed hope becomes a reality in the Ministry of Interior. That is the deal. It's not about excuses. It's not about preempting people or giving excuses why these things are not doable or why they're not working. No, it's not about that. It's about shaving excuses, putting all hands on them, and making sure that the job is done. So yes, we understand that people will try to frustrate the system, but it's our responsibility to ensure that we're not frustrated. It's our responsibility to ensure that we do what is right. It's our responsibility to ensure that a Nigerian 
in Canada, a Nigerian in America, a Nigerian in UK, a Nigerian in Europe, in Asia, in any in Syria alone, in Cameroon, comes to Nigeria. And the moment you get to that airport, you see the immigration border. You are happy that you are in Nigeria because you get a sweet experience. What is my target? That is the target of President Tinubu. That is the mandate I've been given. And we are sure Nigerians. By the grace of God, we will deliver. We are not saying we will do this or without giving you timelines. We gave timeline when we were going to clear backlogs. God helped us. We cleared our backlogs. We gave timeline when we we're going to do the automated passport system. January, God helped us with deliver. We gave, we've given timeline for the contactless from day one, which is March 8th. We will deliver. We've given timeline now for the e-gate, for the advanced passenger system, for the command and control center, which is the first of its kind in Africa. It's right there at the immigration headquarters. It is reality. So we gave timeline. We always like to give deadline. This is when we work, where we work, because Government business, as I said, is not nobody's business. Government business is my business, it's your business, it's our business. When we begin to set timelines for delivery, to say, I want to want to achieve this by this time, this is it, and there are timelines, there were KPI, key performance indicators. Believe me, failure will become a mirage. And that is what Renewed Hope is about. That's why I'm here as Minister of Interior. I'm not here to just be called Minister of Interior. President Chinubu did not appoint me just to be called Minister of Interior. He appointed me to be able to bring his vision into reality, and that's what we are doing. Then in Saudi Arabia, Dr. Abubakar Damu, thank you so much for your advice, three major languages. Then at the moment, jingles, advertorials, and uh, are already going on. In, uh, it, in terms in those languages, but of course there are issues. There are some of these points that you have raised that of course will also help us to enhance our system and, uh, and make sure that we're able to deliver um, appropriately. Then border enforcement, yes, the Nigerian border is key, but of course, you know, it's a security thing. It's not what I can discuss here. We are working around the clock um, on it. Uh, when Nigerian Immigration Service is responsible for protection of our border. We are not, uh, I mean, we are aware of that. And we understand that we have a very... Um, our border space, we border about terrestrially about four different countries. We border Cameroon, we border Chad, we border Niger, we border uh, Benari and uh, Benari Republic. And of course, uh, we is a unique one because two of the countries we border in ECOWAS, two are not ECOWAS. Cameroon is not an ECOWAS country. Um, same with Chad, it's not an ECOWAS country. And we understand the proximity of Niger, the proximity of Chad to um, to uh, Mauritania, to Mali, to Burkina Faso. So there are a lot of challenges. So we understand the nitty gritty of, of, of this space and we understand the contiguous nature of our border space, contiguous natures, the asymmetric uh, border solution and the border system. So we understand all these things. We are working around the clock and Nigerians can be sure that, as I said, I can't wait to get done with this passport issue by the grace of God with, the, with our people in immigration so that we can devote all our energy massively in border control. Border control is the main responsibility of Nigeria Immigration Service. And success everywhere, failure in border control is failure everywhere because a nation is only as secured as its border. Show, show me a, a, a country with a secured border and I'll, and I'll show you a safe nation. That is the truth. So we are working seriously and I have to use this opportunity to appreciate the president. He has been so wonderful. He has been pushing us. He has been giving all the support that is needed for us to be able to, to, uh, to, to secure uh, our border space. Because once we control border, we can control what comes in, what goes out. It also helps us to avoid trafficking. It helps us to human trafficking, women trafficking, and all. Once we're in charge of our border, you know, we will be able to do the needful. And we are working very hard on that. And uh, as I said earlier, we're not here to give excuses. That's the truth. We are here to prefer solutions. That's what the president keeps telling us every point in time. Don't come to me and give excuses for failure. Come here tell me what you have done, show me the result, then you can tell me what you went through to get the result, but don't tell me what you have been through without result, give me the result. And Nigerians can be rest assured that in terms of border control, we will continue to do our best, even though we are open to ideas, we are open 
to opinions, knowing fully well that uh, nobody has monopoly of knowledge. We must continue to learn. We must continue to build uh, bridges rather than um, building walls. And we must continue to tap from each other, one another's uh, wisdom at every point in time. The NIS staff at airports, as I said, we are automating the whole process, and that will basically reduce the human contact to the barest minimum. Then the uh, backlog between new system and the old ones, there are no issues. We've done it in Nigeria, as I said, in the last one month, we've been running it. We've been we've so, we've been running this new platform, and we tell you that uh, there are absolutely no issues with the old platform. Everything is pr is pretty worked out. Then um, issue of COD, well, there are a lot of uh, developments when it comes to the COD that we we have now. I mean, it's not every COD now that you need to come to Abuja, this one, who might have. So there are a lot of processes that we've done, but there'll be a lot of advocacy that will come up probably after this. We'd like to do that in, in, in collaboration with NITCOM. So that uh, so that once we are able to do it with NITCOM, we'll be able to get because the diaspora community is an integral. It's a key part of of who we are as Nigeria. Because in Nigeria is not the beauty of Nigeria is in our diversity. The beauty of Nigeria is about uh, all is about being able to have handshake, you know, across the Niger, even across the ocean, Atlantic Ocean. Now that's the beauty of Nigeria, and I think our people in diaspora they need to be able to have that sweet experience. Then. You you spoke about how long it will take to get the passport. The whole idea we're trying to do is by the time this system is uh, sorted, it means that you can finish your application in five, 10 minutes. And once you do that, then the our our embassy, their responsibility would just be to be printing these passports after approvals. You know, we will still be printing in at the level of various embassies. So if from there we will now courier to people's homes. That's for people that decide to. I mean, if you, if your choice is you want your passport couriered to you, your home, your office will courier to you. If you want to come and pick it, yeah, that would be that would be a, that option. But the bottom line is. There should be no human interface, especially if you don't have issues. The only set of people is maybe if your biometric on the contact list, your biometric feature does not correlate with what we have in our database, then we cannot invite you down. That's just the only thing. But once it correlates and we are sure you are who you say uh, you are, then uh, then we don't have any issue. We can we just produce and DHL. So our our um, attaches can now do or other jobs that they are supposed to be doing. The job of the of immigration attaches abroad, it's not just passport. Passport is very small in terms of what they're supposed to be doing. But at the moment, all they do is passport, passport, passport. Let technology, technology do the job. While our attaches can provide the support, can provide the support for Nigerians that are actually in need, in line with the mandate of the Nigerian Immigration Service, you know, as itemized in the Nigerian Immigration Act of 2015. The new issues in South Africa, well, um, as I've said, I believe we'll work with um, diaspora community to make sure that we're able to solve this problem. So my, um, the moderator, these are some of the, I mean, the ones that I, I was able to pen down. Maybe there are other questions I wouldn't know, but we just want to assure Nigerians that this is renewed hope. I want to assure Nigerians that this is business unusual. We want to uh, 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 want to assure Nigerians in diaspora that we want the experience you get in UK, the experience you see Americans get in America, the experience you see the British get from the British Home Office. We want to give you a sweeter experience and to tell you that greatness resides with us. Greatness resides in Nigeria, and Nigeria can be great. And not just that Nigeria can be great. Nigeria will be great. And by the grace of God, renewed hope will become a reality. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Let's give our minister a lot of round of applause. Yeah. Those well done, sir. Well done, sir. Nigerians are really happy with you, and Nigerians are praying for you that uh, at the end of the day, we will have to celebrate you and celebrate our great country. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, let me let me now invite uh, the CG to uh, give us additional operational. <laughs> Issues and responses to all the questions. The CG man. Sorry, CG. 
Greater the, the functionality of Nigerian community as a thing, and that they hope the promise will be fulfilled. And um, Dr. Chris Brooks is an African American. <clears throat> he joined the conversation, he sent to me, he said he wants his Nigerian passport. And I think I discussed with the minister. Some of them have done the DNA, they are Nigerians by ancestry, and they want their Nigerian passport. Yeah. And Dr. Brooks says, I believe that giving people like us, very successful African Americans that have done our DNA, our Nigerian passport will be a boost to the nation. Richie from Kazakhstan, we try to get in. Nigerians in Kazakhstan, all those Sazda countries <laughs> also need intervention. I think those three came in again. Thank you very much, Madam. And that if you lost your passport, this Nigerian lost his passport, he's living illegally in some country. But he lost his passport. You need a police report to get your passport back. But it's an illegal immigrant. So he says, if he gets the police report, they might report him. So what can they do in that circumstance? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Your minister speaks. You know that uh, there is very little to add. My minister is vast, is knowledgeable, and by the grace of God, the Nigeria Immigration Service has leveraged on his vast experience, both you know, in and out of the office and technology. And we will continue to be proud of you, sir. We are missing you. We'll come back soon. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Concerning, <laughs> concerning the issue of uh, Greater Manchester, issue of um, uh, the Greater Manchester. Indeed, I was in Manchester and I saw the uh, expansive property, thank you so much, of um, belonging to Nigeria government in Manchester is unoccupied. Is there, the people is almost in a dilapidated state. But for the efforts of Nigerians in diaspora that are there, that are trying to put the um, um, building to use, the structure to use, it will have collapsed by now. Nigeria Immigration Service actually made an effort about three or four years ago to open that particular office to serve as an additional passport issuing center for Nigerians in the United Kingdom. Because all over the United Kingdom, people have to go to London for, this, uh, for the purpose of uh, passport services. But we later discovered that there is more to it than just getting an, um, a place and begin to operate. We have to synergize with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Nigeria Immigration Service is not allowed to carry out any operations outside the em embassy, high commission, or consular office. So that is what I have found out, you know, and I have reported my finding to my minister, and he has taken up the matter with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I hope that very soon, in the near future, we will be able to have uh, a handshake with the Ministry of um, Foreign Affairs to enable us use that uh, office. Because we, all, we have all the facilities ready, but except we have the binding of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, which we are working on. It will not be easy for us to do that. And as for our dear beloved brother, who has been able to ascertain his uh, ancestry uh, to Nigeria uh, through the DNA, we are very happy, the more the merrier, but um, Nigeria passports will only be issued to bona fide Nigerians. And there are just three ways of acquiring the citizenship of Nigeria. By birth, by registration, and by naturalization. Our brother is welcome to acquire the citizenship of this country 
through registration or naturalization, which has a process, it has to find out. Um, the, the issue of um, passport intervention, the Honorable Minister has um, given me a task, which of course I will leave on the shoulders of my able DCG, <laughs> who is in charge of uh, passport and other travel documents. She will tell her story as far as passport intervention is concerned. The floor is yours, Terminanda. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Regarding the intervention, um, it took place last year, September and October, and uh, we went to about three countries, America, Canada, and, uh, and England. And uh, what you need to know is that for us to do intervention, usually we use the mobile enrollment unit. And that unit um, requires certain processes for it to be done. When we capture them on the mobile enrollment unit, we come back and we have to do a photo swap. It's a very tedious process. And uh, presently we've produced over 3000 passports, which we have sent to the United States and Canada. And the issues normally with that is that most people will go to capture, do their need exactly you know, that day, that, uh, that, at that moment. So for you, for you to do your name and for your name to drop, it, uh, it's, it's not something that uh, happens immediately. So the problem with the uh, intervention most likely, most times is the fact that the name doesn't drop and there's a, there's a gap. If we don't have your name, there's no way we can produce your passport. And there are cases where the name, the name on the name is different from what we have in your passport. So there's no way these passports can be produced. But the passports, the, I mean, the case, the applicants that have no problem, no cases, all their passports have been produced and we have sent them back to uh, US and Canada. Over 3,000 booklets have been produced and we have successfully sent them back to their various owners. But the ones pending right now are the ones where we're still trying to see if they can go back to the NIN office and uh, reconcile their NIN number or their NIN uh, data with the data on their passports presently. And then of course, we're doing it in batches. We've done for the US, we've done for Canada. Now we're on to United Kingdom. So very soon, the people in the United Kingdom, you'll be getting your passports. And uh, luckily the attaché there, he just resumed and he's doing a very good job. He has sent us all the list of the people that needs to be, you know, to do the photo swap. There's something called the photo swap from the mobile enrollment unit into the, you know, the main production machine. So that's just it in a nutshell. We're doing our job and uh, over 3,000 passports have been produced. There are one or two that would have problems with their name or with, uh, or some also change of data. Change of data also takes a while. So I think that's what we have for now, Ma. Thank you. Yes, I will quickly address some issues um, that are related directly to our profession, like the issue of a third party that was mentioned. Um, we do not forbid assistance. For example, for illiterate parents who cannot um, we uh, use that, that cannot successfully navigate their ways on a on a, a system. They can get somebody to assist them. We don't forbid that. What we forbid is fraudulent documents, fraudulent document um, submission, because this will definitely compromise the integrity of our data. That's all. We nobody forbids an assistance. Um, for Uche. Okugo, I, okay, I've addressed that. We will increase our passport production machines. There is a provision for that. The Honorable Minister of Interior has been very, very supportive in terms of providing uh, financial support for all uh, men to enhance our activities, to enhance our services. And then, um, Naido Sierra Leone, you talked about some who are dressed in mufti. 
and attend to uh, people who are uh, coming home. Well, I will not disclose the identities of these people for security reasons. Yes, but they have identities, you know, and um, but we are improving on it in accordance with the provisions of the International Civil Aviation Organization on the requirement, the, uh, the length of time that a, an air traveler is supposed to spend when coming back from a long journey. You know, uh, by the time we introduce the um, um, passenger advanced passenger information system, by the time we deploy it fully, you know, only persons of interest Will be required to talk to these people, and we have made provisions for secondary inspection units in our uh, airports. So that is that. As for the issues of tolls being used, um, like the Honorable Minister have addressed that, I will not spend time on that. Um, in Melbourne, we look Nigeria Immigration Service. Yes, I, yeah, the Honorable Minister has also addressed our efforts in the um, border management. Day and night, we work on that. I was somewhere today to seek for interagency collaboration with one of the most sensitive sec uh, security agencies in Nigeria. The identity of those people, too, I will not discuss. Um, yes, Odunayo, you said you applied for your passport since sometime last year. I implore you to make an effort to check at the passport center where you did this, because I was in London and I was in um, Italy. I was also in France, I mean, in, um, yes, in Paris, and um, also Ikeja here in Lagos, Alausa, um, Ikoyitu. The number of passports, that have been produced and have been uncollected is baffling. I suggest that you make an effort to find out if indeed your passport has not been produced. Because the slogan, our mantra for passport booklets, um, for passport booklet uh, backlog now is never again. We don't have issues of the passport booklets. So there is nothing deterring us from producing passports as such when due. The issue of change of data, all lost cases must receive a nod from the Office of the Controller General due to for security reasons. Um, Nigerians who wish to return home with expired passports can do so, provided that the, uh, and the your carrier, the airline, is willing to cooperate. We left an instruction that all airlines should feel free to board our citizens if they have, even if they are with their expired Nigeria passport. But some airlines have been very recalcitrant. They have been difficult. They have not been cooperative in this case. So what they can do is to apply for visas. You can apply for electronic visa. You can apply for visa on arrival. But we will definitely not turn you back if you are coming with an expired passport. The fear of the um, carriers, they are unfounded because we already gave our word. The reason is this. If you bring a non-Nigerian into this country and they are not having their visas, you will be fined. With, uh, with a certain amount of money, not less than 2,000 USD. And it is referred to as carrier liabilities. I think this is what makes some uh, airlines to be a bit dodgy when it comes to, um, uh, to the issue of uh, bringing uh, people with, uh, without, uh, um, with expired passports. But Nigerians will definitely not be turned back and will not sanction them for bringing in our people. So with this, I come to the end of my uh, submission. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, we will have a lot of time to do a vote of thanks, but before then, we're going to you're going to be with us as we make some presentations after that. Yeah.
They are winners of the Nigeria Diaspora Merit Award, but they could not be here then. Uh, Professor Isogwe is one of the, I can't tell you what he does, but one of the, I'll say as if go to the space and back, mm -hmm. the like, yeah. yes. to the moon and back. Yeah. And <laughs> Professor Mani is one of the earliest Nigerians to come back to Nigeria and set up computer, digital things in universities in Nigeria. Well, We got six of me as a date. So if he doesn't get that passport, he's going to lose the employment and everything. So I think you may just be lucky. Boss again, Kako, because I'm going to hand over to, to you to help us resolve this problem. It's one of those few cases that need emergency help. So I hope, um, and there's also somebody in America, I'll send you to you. Thank you very much. So Boss again, Kako, look at <laughs> So, Madam, please join me. We have the, so you see, you are our pioneer diaspora. So, you are lucky and like others. You have the city in migration joining us to do this. Let's start with the. So we are for the Professor Mani. Professor Mani is one of our pioneer winners of the Diaspora Merit Award. You were not around when we did it. So I'll ask the CG to make a presentation. Um, oh, it's a pleasure receiving this. Uh, this is a call to duty and uh, <clears throat> a reason to do more. We have trained over 1.5 million Nigerian youth. Wow. You know, listening to everything going on today, we are very encouraged. I am very encouraged. And my commitment is to my country to continue to learn more and to pass this knowledge to the next generation of Nigerians so that Nigeria will continue to be great and continue to shine and be the giant of Africa that we already are. Thank you very much for this. Prof is not 20 years old again. <laughs> <laughs> he has no, said something no, about no. Prof. Um, of course, uh, very excited to participate in this um, webinar on a topic that is very topical and very important to people in the diaspora. Uh, I speak not just on behalf of the diaspora, but on behalf of the country, both internally 
and uh, art fish stations abroad. The complaint I have received from the consulates that uh, those in particular who serve um, uh, large populations have beleaguered by inability to acquire, uh, to produce these passports. And so the, the plea is to have more passport producing machines, particularly at large centers of demand. Atlanta is a, a good example of that. I'm hopeful that uh, the minister, I saw him, a young man, vibrant, very enthusiastic, and ready to go. You know? And I, I, I now, of course, I wish one would say that they're emulating our doctor here, <laughs> who's very energetic. We, you know, we love her everywhere. You can, you can see people everywhere, you know, extolling her performance. You know? So I'm excited to meet her. More ladies leading you know, uh, major centers of activities that are of interest to the progress of Nigeria. So what happens to our people as what images they have for, uh, about what's going on in the country goes a long way to project the kind of image um, we would like to have of Nigeria. So thank, thank, you, thank you, Prof. Thank you. Let me use the Nigerian uh, lingua by observing all protocols at this particular time. Uh, this is our first diaspora virtual lecture series for 2024. I hope the Honorable Minister is still on. Uh, in Nidukam, Honorable Minister, sir, we Christian people, when you come for Nidukam activity, we give you a name so that we'll always remember you. And I was told that uh, from today, your name will be Action Man. <laughs> Action Man. So if you hear Honorable Dr. Olubu Mitunji Ojo, his name is Action, Action Man. Man. So we thank you very much for honoring us and for the good job you are doing. And you can see in, in your own case, your constituency is global, uh, thanks to NIDCOM. <laughs> the CG of uh, immigration, our dear sister, will also give you a name so that, uh, and I'm happy your officers are here. If you are hearing us calling somebody as dynamic woman, you know that it is your CG. <laughs> dynamic woman. You've been on the seat for some few months, but we can see your trail all over the world from Australia to Manchester in UK, to Canada, to America, to South Africa, everywhere you, you, you are being mentioned. You are very dynamic and we thank God for your life. We thank you also for honoring our invitation and for the good job you are doing in uh, uh, your post. Our chairman knows her title. <laughs> we call her indefatigable chairman. Wow. And she has been on this job for the past five years. Nidcom is a household name globally, not only in, in Nigeria. We thank you, Ma, for organizing this and for the purposeful leadership you have been given in the commission. Let me uh, just conclude by saying we've come a long way in collaborating with the Nigerian Immigration Service. One of the things that has not been uh, mentioned throughout uh, this lecture series is the fact that NIDCOM, uh, uh, through the Nigerian Immigration Service, facilitated the introduction of a 10-year Nigerian passport. It was a big struggle, I remember. It took more than two years 
of arguing whether our passport should be extended uh, beyond five years. And we did that specifically because of some of the issues that have been discussed during this particular webinar. The fact that if you are renewing your passport every five years, why not 10 years? So that you reduce the limit of renewal during your lifetime. So I am challenging the Nigerians in the diaspora that don't be penny wise and pound foolish. Go and renew your passport with the 10 year passport that is available, not the five year, so that you don't have to come back to immigration uh, 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 many times during your stay out there. We also facilitated through the NIS, the visa on arrival program. And it was opposed internally for all kinds of reasons, but NITCOM and the Nigerian Immigration Service stood their ground and we have visa on arrival now. Of course, we thank the NIS for the training of NITCOM staff that you gave severally. And also we cannot but thank you for the immigration desk that you've established also in NITCOM that has facilitated our, our job. With these few remarks, I want to again thank the action man, the dynamic lady, the indefatigable lady, the men are jealous of. <laughs> Professor Osugbe has been in the United States for over 65 years, I was told. He is one of <laughs> he, he, he is one of the Nigerians in the diaspora. And Professor Mani, as you've heard, has been going back and forth between the US and Nigeria over the past 15 years, training our people in ICT. We thank you uh, 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 for coming and for being here with us. We, we want to also thank the over 3,000, by the time we started this webinar, over 3,000 Nigerians in the diaspora from all the continents of the world did uh, log into this webinar. I'm sure by the time we look at the statistics, the number is far much more than that. At some point, the system was crashing because people were struggling to join. Uh, by the grace of God, in August, we'll have the second lecture series for this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. We've come. Okay, uh, my, you know, my, 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 my chairman knows, knows how to play her, her game. She's asking me to tell the CG of immigration that we are overdue for another series of training for the NIDCOM staff. And please, uh, uh, this has to come before July. I know you won't. We, we, know, <laughs> we know immigration and the action man, they work with timelines. So we don't want uh, to hear that uh, we are considering it. We want the timeline. The uh, NIDCOM staff are waiting to come for further training. Thank you very much, ma'am. And to all the officers that accompany you here, we would like to thank you very much uh, for your support and for the good work you are doing for our country, Nigeria. I, I know the, 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 the press people will look for my neck if I'm not careful. <laughs> we thank the gentlemen of the press and especially for our technology transfer and innovation department that have worked tirelessly with the LOC, uh, chaired by Arab, we call him Arab. Arab, Arab. Arab, Arab. Uh, the, yes, and yeah, Honorable Terab. Honorable Terab, and all the, the media staff for uh, NIDCOM. We thank Gabriel you very much. Gabriel. Gabriel is there, uh, seated quietly. Uh, Vivian is in that, uh, Violet is in that corner, and uh, uh, Elijah on the camera and everybody. Thank you very much. It has been a very successful and wonderful outing. Thank you and God bless you. National
Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank